Hey, welcome to The Conversation. You're listening to Andy Mason, and this is authentic conversations around the messy intersection of faith, family, and business. And right now, I am sitting in my office at home in my house. Uh, Thank God we've got a wonderful home, and it backs onto some recreation area. So I've got this outlet, which if it wasn't for that, I yeah grace to those of you who are stuck in apartments or in big cities i'm very very grateful for living where we are but i'm not used to be sitting i'm certainly not used to be restricted i love running i love vision i love doing things fast i uh, had no idea how addicted to busy and accomplishing things i was so right now i'm sitting i've got these restrictions There's all of these different things going on that are being imposed on me that I don't get to choose. And I'm just wondering, how how do I make decisions? How am I going to get back to the office? Am I going to go back to the office? What events can I have? What events can't I have? Are we going to go back to a normal life anytime soon? Or am I going to go back to shelter at home in another couple of months time? Is there going to be an outbreak? All of these different questions are going around me and it's really messing with how I make decisions, how I plan the future because I can't. There's so many things. So in the middle of this, what am I doing? What am I learning? How am I making decisions? So last week I realized this and and day by day I read the Word of God. It's my anchor. Hearing His voice has been the number one thing that has kept me sane and stable and authentic and it's not just hearing his voice knowing that God is real and out there somewhere it's actually hearing his voice so that I know what decisions to make on a daily basis so it got to a point last week and I realized that I'd I'd probably been ignoring that I'm hearing him say come aside listen to me I've got some things to tell you But I'm just running around doing stuff, meetings, looking after my team, doing all the things that I have to do that I'm actually using as a cover to avoid actually doing the one thing that I know that I need to do the most. So I changed that by telling somebody else that same thing. Ray Edwards, I was talking with her saying, this is what I'm going to do. And then I spoke, I've got an exec assistant. I said, can you help me put time in my schedule so that I planned time to get away and just listen to God. Secondly, I knew for me that just sitting at home, I am so easily distracted, especially at the moment. So I need to get away. And for me personally, that looks like walking somewhere. So I literally walked out the back of my house, 30 minutes up a thousand feet to the top of this little uh, knob hill up behind us in Swayze Recreation Area sweating like a pig, nice and hot, but just what I needed to get the drive out of me, to to get to a place where I could actually be in a place to be still and know God. It was amazing. I get up there. I had my dog with me. Uh, We get up to this knob. From there, you can look across and see Whiskey Town Lake. It's beautiful. Uh, Now, again, context for me, uh, Danny Silk describes me as half Iron Man, half Tigger as in we're going to change the world and have fun doing it. So I'm like, go get her. Where we go next? What are you hearing God say? Give me another idea. How can we pivot, adjust? So I get up there. The sting of my energy and frustration and drive is taken out because I've just walked up a thousand feet. So I'm pausing and I start to notice butterflies. Butterflies. At the top of this knob up behind my house, there's butterflies this was I don't know about you but it's not very often that I would sit still and notice butterflies but I noticed these butterflies for a while I'm like God what do you want to say nothing nothing from him I'm just I'm actually enjoying watching these butterflies probably half a dozen of them spinning around floating and flying and fluttering my dog sitting there happily we sit and then we get invaded by ants because we disturbed a rock so then I I've all got these questions, right? I've got these questions I want to ask God about. But I'm, what's happening is I'm starting to decompress. I'm starting to slow down. I'm starting to be still. And that's what I needed to do that. And then I walked down the hill a little bit because I know there was a, there's a table there at the trailhead. I sat at this table. No one else was around. 
and I just opened up my journal and just literally wrote out, these are the questions, bang, 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 and step by step answered every single one, came to me super fast, super quick. I didn't even have time to process them, just wrote down the answers. I had a phone call that I needed to make that just confirmed a whole heap of stuff. I did that from that spot, and then I came back down a separate trail. I think it's called Terminator. So you can just guess what that kind of trail is like. It's a mountain bike trail. Normally I'm biking it or I'm trail running. And I get kind of maybe a quarter of the way down this trail and I've heard God, I've got some insight, direction. It's been really good. I get halfway down this trail and I pause and I'm looking around noticing the burned trees and noticing the green and noticing the birds as in I could hear so many birds and I'm pausing and I'm starting to realize I have never ever come down this trail or up this trail walking. Every time it's been mountain biking or mountain running. Now the thing with mountain biking is when you're mountain biking, you've got to pay very, very careful attention to what you do or you will crash or go off the trail in a heartbeat. So I never have time to look around. I'm only looking ahead. Secondly, when I'm running, mountain, like mountain running, there's rocks, it's rocky, it's up and down. I've got to be really careful where I place my feet because if I don't, I'm going to break an ankle, twist something, fall off the side, go all over the place. So again, even with running, even if I'm running slowly, I still cannot pay too much attention to what's around me because I've got to be careful where I place my feet. But when I walk, I get to pause at any moment. I get to look around. I get to be still. I pause and notice the butterflies. I notice the birds. I notice how beautiful it is around me. And I start to just, it was not surreal, but beautiful. And I start to realize, oh my gosh, I've been addicted to busy. I've been addicted to accomplishing things. I've been addicted to vision and going fast and changing the world. And I've missed one of the core invitations on the planet, which is be still and know God. Stop all your accomplishments. Stop all your activities. Stop all the running here and running there. Be still. Sit at my feet and listen to my voice. And it's not just about listening to his voice. It's actually about enjoying what is around you. So I went through this and walked down and realized I have been running too fast. I've been in too much of a hurry. I've missed some of the goodness that is all around me because I've been going to a great location, to a great place, but going too fast. And I've missed some of the things on the way. Not only that, I've missed some of the connections with people around me on the way because I've been so focused on getting from point A to point B as fast as possible because that's what success is, right? Or maybe not. Maybe what we're learning right now, maybe part of the gift that we've got in this season is to pause, reflect, slow down, detox from hurry. And it's amazing what happens when you slow down and start to look around, you start to see other opportunities. You start to th see and connect with people that you could do things differently. So what about you? For me, I'm going to start to build that into my life a lot more regularly, a lot more consistently. So I'm literally blocking time into my schedule so that I can pause and be still and be a lot more careful about all that I do. What about you? What will you do? I want to encourage you to slow down in order to speed up. Slow down in order to see a different perspective. Slow down in order to see the relationships and the value of the people around you. The very solution to what you need next is highly likely to be just outside of your peripheral vision if you stop and turn aside. I was reflecting with someone actually on a conversation just now about Moses and how Moses, it wasn't until he turned aside, it was just outside his peripheral vision, this burning bush. Once he stepped aside, he noticed something. Time and time again, that's the same. It's just outside of our current vision. If we're willing to slow down, be still, pause, 
ask the question and you'll be amazed at the clarity that you get about what's next for you. But far more than that, it's this invitation to be present with your creator in the middle of creation. Look around you, see the trees, hear the birds, watch the butterflies. I would have never thought that I'd be someone to say, butterflies, I saw these butterflies, they were so beautiful. So what I wanna do is, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't normally do this, but I just wanna pray for you right now as you're listening. And I just bless you with peace. I bless you that in the middle of this crazy times, that God will grant you the peace and the grace to be still, to be still in the storm, to be still in the noise, be still in everything volatility, be still in the uncertainty, be just push pause on everything else and take time to slow down and look around and notice the good things that are around you. Doesn't matter what the body count is, the butterflies are still flying. Doesn't matter what's going on, there's still some green trees growing up around that will be here a hundred years from now. It's going to be okay. So I bless you with peace. I bless you with pause. And I bless you to learn what you can only learn in this time and then turn it into practical action steps that will set you up for the future. Hey, thanks for listening. If this has been valuable for you, make sure you grab a copy of Finding Hope in Crazy Times. It's my new book. It's out on Amazon. You get the free audio book with that. And also just keep a heads up. We're going to be launching a few things coming forward. The value of walking with people and being accountable. I'm doing one right now with Ray Edwards called Hey God, What Now? That's heygodwhatnow.com. It's literally day by day, day helping people hear God and turn it into practical action steps. And it's just a fun, fun journey. So I bless your day and we'll be with you again next week.